Now, that brings us to this second division, verses 8 through 16, reservation of a remnant through which the promises are to be fulfilled. God always had a remnant. Thus saith the Lord. I'm reading verse 8 now. As the new wine is found in the cluster and one saith, destroy it not for a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servants' sake that I may not destroy them all. In spite of their sins, God would not totally exterminate them because of the remnant. It's just like a cluster of grapes in a vineyard that had been passed by. And it was a cluster of wonderful grapes. Now he says, verse 9, "...and I will bring a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it. My servants shall dwell there." Now, a seed out of Jacob could refer to Christ, and I think it does. But more particularly, it refers to the remnant out of Israel that is to be saved. And for the sake of the remnant, God will make good his promises, as he makes it very clear here in verse 10. I probably should read verse 10. And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks, and the valley of Achor a place for the herds to lie down in, for my people that have sought me. You see, there would be a place for the flock, for the little flock. They'd be safe. That's the remnant. Now, verse 11. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. In other words, for the remainder of the nation that went headlong without heeding the word of God, there remains nothing but punishment. I do not know why today intelligent people who believe in the existence of God can escape the ultimate fact that there will finally come a judging. There must come a straightening out of things and that If they continue on in sin, they'll be judged just as God judged the bulk of this nation. And we need to make a distinction between the nation and the remnant. Verse 14, Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And I think we have the same situation in the church today. Tremendous bloated membership. And that church is a tremendous organization. Somebody says, will the church go through the great tribulation period? There is a church that's going through the great tribulation period. It's called an old harlot in the 17th of Revelation. It's just an organization. It doesn't belong to Christ. It's not his bride at all. Now, they'll be taken out before the great tribulation period. We need to recognize there is a distinction to be made between that which is outward and that which is the genuine.